guys, this is Golden Craig Williams of Shattered Empire. If you want to rock, you got to talk. And you're watching the Dave Darren Show live on Facebook. Do you know the Dave Darren Show? It's not enough to boil a monkey's bum. Most people say, who the fuck is Dave Darren? Like Disneyland, I'm the happiest fucking guy on earth. Who the fuck is Dave Darren? Who the fuck is Dave Darren? Are you a poof duck? He used to be on terrestrial radio, but he got fired. It's over. Don't you think it's over? Aspen, Aspen, Aspen. Who the fuck is Dave Darren? Here comes the boss fella now. Dave Darren. Welcome to Dave Darren Show. I've got the very cool band. I'm going to tell you about the name of the band. I got Great Williams there. And BB Bones. And BB Bones. Here. How'd you get the name Bones? How many How many women do you bone on a particular night? <laughs> yeah, I wish that's the way I got that name. <laughs> but, uh, a long, long time ago, I used to be in a death metal band. Of course, that's where my influences come from in the beginning. And uh, his dad was always saying to me, Oh, man. That guy's like B.B. King, but he's B.B. Bones. And I was like, all right, works for stuck, me. Stuck with it's you. Stuck. Okay, very cool. So yeah. the, na the name of the band is Shattered Empire, right? Correct. Correct. It's easy for me to remember that name, and I'll tell you why. My wife sold her car, and now she wants to buy another car. And, of course, I'm interfering with that. She wants the cool, classy vehicle. I want the muscle car. So now I've got shattered balls from her kicking me in the balls all the time. <laughs> And now my empire used to be the 3,200 square foot house. Now it's the fucking dog house. So my whole <laughs> empire is shattered. So it's easy to remember the name of the band. Uh, I think a sure. lot of people can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because a lot of people have problems and their empire is just shattered. That's well, right. Hey, it's worse than muscle, the muscle car. I can tell you that much. I don't want to be driving around in a yellow Prius or some shit. Right. No, no, I, I can't deal with that shit. She doesn't want, thank God she doesn't want that shit. She's, a, <laughs> she's got some class, except for when she's giving me a lot of oral sex, and there's a lack of class there, right? But that's what we want. That's what yeah. we want. It depends. Yeah. I'm down with that kind of class. Yeah, and then we're, we haven't even gotten into the anal discussion yet, so that's where class really goes out the window. But tell me about the band, man. What's going on with the music? You got some new music coming out, right? Uh, yeah, we got we got a new album coming out here, and uh, it's released. Uh, uh, we just released it uh, Sunday. Right. Okay. August twelfth, and uh, and uh, now we're trying to promote our album before we get out on the road. By the way, right. before we get into it, tell me the names of the guys in the band because we got and the instruments you play. I mean, we've been introduced to you guys, but no one knows the instrument instruments you play except for Bone because he's playing with his bone all the time. But beyond that, who we got? Who do we got? Okay, so I'm the lead vocalist, Mr. BB Bones on guitar, and we have Mr. Bobby Glass on drums and Mark Buzz on bass guitar. Very cool. Now, how long have you guys... I have a guitar player, but it didn't work out. So. It didn't work so out. With a four-piece like we had before. I get to get into that discussion. These guitar players, man, they're big vaginas. That's what they are. You play one lick that's like way out of their league. They're saying, what the hell was that? I can't hang with this guy. At least you got your words correct. You were talking about lick and their vaginas within the same sentence. So that's appropriate. I like, I like the way you're going with this conversation. You hear that? You see that? How they're like, they're vaginas, but they're sloppy vaginas because they can't play guitar rock. They're all sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now, Greg, I know you've been out there. You've been you've been awarded as well. Like you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Las Vegas. I think. Am I right about that? Correct. Correct. Yeah, and and he got inducted in 2018. Now, so nice. Well, that's now, pretty good. And the rest of the group. Fans in Las Vegas, are they as supportive as they used to be years ago? Because I used to play in the 70s and the 80s. And I've noticed a little bit of a lack of appreciation from the fans. And we got to bring that back. I don't want to make this show about a negative situation. But we got to bring the fans back to the music. Because they're too, they're too busy watching uh, Netflix. 
They're busy watching all kinds of other shit, and they're not really involved in the music. We got to draw them out. How do we do that? Yeah. How do we do yeah. that? Yeah, you're absolutely correct there. Okay. I mean, don't you? Uh, you're not going to answer me yet. Let's play a piece of music, then answer me. I'm going to let you think about it during the during the music. Almost done. We have a lot more for to that question. So that's right. That's right. And we're going to get back to it after this commercial break, which is going to be your music, because we want to make it commercially available. So what are we going to what are we going to, <laughs> what are yes, we going to start sure. off with? What should we start off with, guys? Uh, uh we'd like you to play uh one of our new tunes. It's uh one of our new, latest songs. It's called Streets of Hollywood. Okay. And it's all Hollywood scene. There's a whole story behind it. Cool. Keep that story in mind and we're going to come back in a second. Here we <laughs> go, guys. All right. show I was talking about fans I was talking about fans coming to your gigs not asking for a free door admission or a cover to, or no cover to come in I want them to buy merchandise I want them to go to your if you're selling your music on iTunes or it's available it's your gigs I want them to buy that how do we motivate today's fans to really think about what there's what what they need to do to support the great music that's out there you guys got great music I want them to support you what can we do to try to help that out a little bit? Well, go ahead. I want to give my, my two cents on this. We get rid of all the media. <laughs> we get rid of it. And then we have to go to the shows to see the band. We have to get out there like us. I mean, bands, we said we could sit right here, write the songs all day long, put it on the internet, put it on YouTube, tell everybody to do something and just Facebook it out. But nobody goes to the shows anymore. You aren't going to see a flyer on a car. You just, you're going to go somewhere and you won't see one. 
But before you had to do it, it was a hustle. You had to get out there. You had to go fly all the bars, all the scenes. Hey, guess what? Boots right playing tonight. Okay, let's, let's do it. Rockstar, the movie Rockstar. There you go. That's what it should be like now. Yeah. But it is no longer that way. Greg, what do you and think? I, what do you think? You know why these fans aren't motivated to buy uh, music that they like? I mean, if if I if I hear a band and I like them, of course I'm going to go out and buy the album. I want it. You know, I want that artwork. I want everything. I mean, it makes sense. I don't understand why people don't want to support support the artist. I, I believe that we don't think about that. What we think about is I've done it myself. I'm guilty of it. I heard a bits and pieces of a song. I'm like, well, let me go to YouTube and see if it's on there. And there it is, the whole album. So mm. there it is on iTunes. Why the heck am I going to go and pay the money to get this thing? But there's very few people that say, I want the CD, I want this, the artwork, I want on and on and on. It's right there in their face, you know. The technology's right there in your face. Now, playing your music, how many vaginas do you guys get into your face? Greg, we'll start with you first. Oh, me? Not, not much. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't much. Come on, man. Um, I, I, I can see. I can the see. whole front row <laughs> and the rest of the building. I'll take the second row. It, it, would you say your music's very sexual? Do you connect to your audience in a sexual way? Uh, I wouldn't say that about every song, but some of them. <laughs> okay. There's a song you don't have there called Town to Town. It's for sure. Uh, it's about that. And, and Funny. Can, yeah, we, uh, can we get that one for the show at some point? Where are we going to be able to air that? I don't have sure. it. I'll, okay. Sure, we can get that. Okay, I'm going to play that. And, and by the way, I'm going to take that track and I'm going to slip it into the bedroom and hope that my wife just had her birthday yesterday. So I'm due to get sex for from her because what, when it's her birthday, we promise each other three weeks worth of sex every single night. So what I'm uh, going to do is I'm going to slip that CD in while I'm slipping my penis into my wife. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> sounds great. Sounds great. I'll put a little bit of that footage, that video footage on this interview, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in the meantime, what can we play by you guys? We're going to play a second piece of music from you guys. Tell us about it and tell us what we're going to play. This next one is... Uh, the title track of our album, it's called Rise of the Empire. Now, Rise of the Empire, uh, this song is more about, I'd say more about politicians and what's going on in the world today. Actually, it was more about what was going on before Trump came in office, but it pretty much like sets in what's going on with politicians and corruption. Wow. 
this album that you've got out now, is it very different than your previous works? And I know the answer to that question, but I want to ask you guys now for our listening audience and our viewing audience. Is your yeah. music, are, are you intentionally making your music different from CD to CD? Or, or are you trying to be consistent with what you think is, is working? Or are you very experimental? Uh, we're the type of guys, we really don't follow trends. We really don't care what what's popular, what people are doing today. We just do what we feel and in our heart and soul, what makes us happy. And, and we hope that it makes our fans happy. Of course, you want to keep your fans happy all the time. But we try to give a variety of uh, heavy metal and rock type music so that so that we can keep the people interested. And, uh, you know, a lot of people from the 80s, they want to hear a certain type of music. So we try to mix in a variety of different types of stuff. So it's almost like you're listening to Van Halen, Judas Priest, and, you know, and mix it up a little bit. But really, we're writing from our heart, and and we're doing what we really what we're feeling. We're not really following any type of trend, and uh, you know, like what everybody else is doing today. Uh, we're not that type of band. We don't do that. If you had to pick both of you guys, if you had to pick a favorite song from your most recent release, do you guys pick the same song? And and if you don't, what's the differences and why? So, Greg, what's your favorite piece of music off your current release? Off of this new release? Yeah, what's your favorite? I'm curious. Uh, my favorite, well, there's a lot of good ones. Um, curious too, nice. but, but one of my favorites, only because of the, because I relate to it a lot, is Streets of Hollywood. Because growing up in California and seeing everything around me, I, it, the lyrics and everything, I, I, I relate to it like, like it's part of my life. Like basically, that's how it was written. That's how a lot of songs are written. Um, I write about what I feel or what I see or what I, uh, what kind of uh, experience I have in life. I gotta agree with him. That Street to Hollywood, it's like the, it's the baby of the band. That that right there was one of the, the newest song that we've we've ever written. The newest one. What are you going to do now? Well, Streets of Hollywood becomes one of your fan favorites, and well, and you've got and, and, and you've got to play that consistently every single show. Your fans are going to desire that to be played. It's it's your anthem. How are you going to keep that fresh? Are you going to keep it as authentic it is off of the music that you recorded, or to keep it fresh for you? Are you going to vary it and experiment? What are you going to do with that number one hit from your band? I'm going to play the hell out of it. And when those people are there feeding that energy back to me, I'm going to feed it right back to them. In, the, in the original format of the original sound, or are you going to vary it a bit? Are you oh, going to try to keep it authentic? I, I think, I think we're going to authentic. try to keep it authentic. But, yeah, but, exactly. and, and we try to keep everything authentic when we play live. Mm -hmm. You know, like you'll hear the CD. A lot of bands will go off drifting. Mm -hmm. We try to stay with that uh, format and, and stay with that. But you might hear a little bit of different sounds here and there, but it, but it's pretty close to what yeah. you're listening to on the CD. Right. I like to stay stay consistent with that, but uh, yeah, like he was saying about the energy, when if you're playing the same song you've been playing for 30 years, and that energy is there, just like Kiss when they're doing rock and roll all night, you got that energy. It builds the energy inside you, so. That song isn't still. It, it it stays alive and it stays with you for when you write a song. It stays with you for the rest of your life. You know that you're a musician as well. So mm -hmm. that's that's the way I feel about music. I, I don't know. I guess I'm pretty deep into it as far as mm -hmm. that goes. Sure. Well, add on to that is that uh, I love the solo, the streets of Hollywood. I mean, I love enjoy playing it. I think it's amazing. Super fun to me. It was great. And we love you. The, <laughs> the, first, the, the first riff to Rise of the Empire is an amazing riff. When I first wrote that, I felt every time I could listen to it to this day, I turned on the radio and I jam out to it. I'm driving through my car and just hearing that. What should we play yeah. next? Another piece of music. This is the third piece we're going to play here. What should it be? I guess go ahead and play uh, Angels. Okay. This Angels song's called Angels. 
I don't know if, if you actually got to review it very good, but uh, uh, there's, a, there's a story about that song. I mean, a lot of people, uh, they, they hear the music and they say, oh, that's heavy, I like it. They're not quite getting the message what I'm sending out, and, and it's a whole different thing. What I'm doing is I'm turning around and I'm sending the complete opposites, opposite message than what other bands are doing. I'll turn around and write about how to do the right thing and write about God. They're writing about Satan. I'm writing about that. I don't quite say anything about that, but it turns out that that's what I'm doing. And then the people turn around and go, oh, that's awesome. That kicks ass. That's metal. Well, you're not quite hearing the message. I mean, we're not like Striper where you totally hear the message. That's, that's I kind of twist it on the fans and they don't even, some of them don't even get it. I think it's an amazing song. I'm, I'm super happy with the solo, with the riffs. With the We're going to play Angel right now, and you guys have mentioned solo quite a bit, so I imagine instead of getting a drink, you're going to go over to your computer, pop up some porn, do some solo work in front of the computer, and then you'll come back and we'll finish up the interview, right? They call me VP Boner. I mean, bonus. bonus. <laughs> and I don't want to be around if it's, if it's being him. I mean, we're the girls, man. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you better send them our way, Dave. I'll do that. I'll, I'll give you the Dave Darren credit card, all right? I'm asking about how many girls in the pre at the at the show, who, who gets the most girls or what's going on. Why are you asking that type of question? <laughs> hey, we're interviewing you now. What's going in your mind there, buddy? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. Let's play the music. You guys, take a little break. I'm going to play the music. Here we go.
Welcome back to the Dave Darren Show, Shattered hey, Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Shattered Empire is with the, with us here right now. By the way, I'm curious about this. When yes. when your when your music is like like the last track, the, all the music we played off this CD here, all the music we played. Is there yes. any worry that you're going to hit this pinnacle and have written your best piece of music? How are you going to How are you going to surpass that? Is there ever? I used to. I'll tell you when I used to do terrestrial radio. And like I said, they used to give me CDs of each show. I used to play them back, and I used to write on them. Like, this is an 8, this is a 7, this is a 5. And if I ever wrote down a 9, I would fucking panic and think, how am I going to get that guest matched with yeah. my personality and recreate that? I would always fucking freak myself out with that to the point that I never played any more CDs anymore of my shows. Do you have any worry about that at all? Yes, Dave. Yeah, I had that exact same worry. When I write that riff and then I hear the song and I'm saying, oh, no. Oh, God. That's my highest point. Done. I never think that way. It can't be. I don't know what's wrong with you folks. We're musicians. We're we're the guitar (laughs) players. That's why. It can always be better. True. It can always be better and you're always going to see somebody better than you, too. No matter how good you are, no matter how professional you are, you're always going to see somebody better and you can always top everything you do. Well, if you if you work hard enough, you can do it. Yeah. Okay. I believe. A, I mean, I believe that's true. Take a look on his face. Like I believe. No, I believe no, that. I do believe that. What's that? I, I do believe that because, like I told you, this, this this next three weeks of my wife's birthday, we've got to have sex for three weeks. So the way I go into it, literally, the way I go into it is every time it's going to be better. And my wife keeps telling me, Dave, it's going in reverse. It's getting worse every fucking time. So that's, that's <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> You've been listening to too much falling in reverse. You've got to have faith in yourself. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but you do. You have to have faith in, in, in music as well, obviously. When you're, on st- when you're on stage, are you mostly innerly focused on the connectivity of you and the other instruments on stage? Or are you more of the band that's focused on what's going outside of you on on your fan base? What what do you focus on when you're on stage? What's in your head? Yeah. The of me is I'm making sure the music's right. That's why sometimes I'm not unless I'm hammered, I'm completely concentrating on the music. But once I get when I get some shots and some beers in me, then I'm concentrating on oh man, I'm so I'm Right there with the audience. I, I, I focus on the music and, and, and I try to feel it on stage. But he, like he said, I like to try to connect with the audience as well. Sometimes you might catch me uh, in a couple songs where I'm in my own world and I'm kind of like, I don't know. It's almost like I'm in a dream. Sure. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I'm just feeling that song at the moment and that's all I'm feeling. And I, and I got lights hitting me and there's people all over, but I, I don't even notice that. They're like little ants. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's not a good thing to say about your fans. But, yeah, if it's a big show, they're like, they're, it's, you know, the more people there are, you can only see so far, and then that's it. It's an amazing yeah, feeling. Those lights in your face. But, yeah, it feels great. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the best yeah. high in the world. But then you forget because you got your other, say, you got your drummer and your bass player over here, and you two, got me and Greg, you know, sometimes... We're here, freaking. We're in our own world. We're just rocking the freak out. Like, it's amazing, super cool. Everybody's into it. And the drummer and bass player are looking at us like, "What the hell are they doing?" Like we're locked, man. <laughs> the music, we're feeling this shit. You know, it, it's funny you should say that because when I used to play, and I, I I played seven days a week actually in in some parts of my life, but we would be we would be up on stage. We'd be really connecting, and it's like you said, you get in a groove. You get like in a trance. And yes, some, exactly. sometimes, sometimes that trance, I'd be so into that trance, I would get where the, I would forget where the fuck I was within the song because I'd be like in this trance of momentum build up and I would forget. How do you overcome that? How do you guys overcome that trance and then loosen it and then got to pull it back to where you were in the song? How do you do that? Oh, I, I've never quite really had that type of problem. I, 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 <laughs> no, I'm I serious. Really, really it's the like, drugs from the 70s. The drugs from the 70s. <laughs> I'd be usually focused on the song. I'd have to be completely wasted to lose my spot there. But, hmm. but no, no, it has happened at rehearsal a couple times. And, and, and you're like, oh, wow, i got to catch myself here. And 
I don't, I don't know how I do it. I just, I mean, there could be a mistake, and I just pull it. Like, nobody would know there was a mistake, not even the band. Like, like they're the ones making the mistake, and I just pull it together somehow. I don't know how I do it. Don't I do that? You do. He do. does that, too, as but, well. Yeah, my, my thing is that sometimes when you're, you're talking about it, you're in that groove, you're in that mode, you're just jamming, just filling it all, all of a sudden. But for me, it feels like everything's going great. But then reality hits, and it's like, wait a second, I go, oh, okay, and then you get all stone faced again, and you're you're trying to catch up where everybody else was. Yeah. But that's why you got to have a great rhythm section, and you got to have them. You're behind the beat is like, hey man, he's in his own world, and the people are loving it. Let's just keep on going. It's almost like you're hypnotized. Yes. Exactly. Exactly yeah. right. It is exactly like that. Do you think that it's important for a band? to do a state-to-state -state across the country tour. Is that something that's important? Is that something you guys want to do, is just traveling to a lot of states across the entire country? Do you want to do it? Is it feasible to do it? To, to me, it's important. To me, I, I want to do it. It's just something I want to do. I mean, uh, I think it's important to reach out to your fans, especially if you have fans all over the world, which we do. I think that you need, you know, a lot of these people are waiting. They want to see you in person. They want to see that live performance. So, so yeah, I, I kind of think that that's important to to get to the other states. And yeah, of course, there's other countries, but sometimes it's hard to get to all these places. Let's uh, play another piece of music. Then we're going to come back and we're just going to close the show out with you tremendous musicians and guys in the band here. But let's play a, a, a this is our fourth song. We're playing a lot today. Fourth song. Yeah. What, what can we do? Yeah. How many do you want to play? Twenty? No, yeah, well, just... yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, let, let's do a fourth, and then we'll think about the fifth to the twentieth eventually. But what should we do fourth? Uh, this next song is called "The Helm." So, um, would you like to explain the helm? It's no. kind of a heavy song, like priest. <laughs> it's kind of like a priest type song. Okay. It's called, it's called "The Helm," like the captain of the ship, and. It's kind of a fantasy type, kind of like a movie type song, um, but uh, it definitely rocks, and it will fucking kick your ass. It rocks. So it, it's it's kind of a fantasy. What's your fantasy? Mine is to be with a midget. I, I've well, never been with a midget. Fantasy. I'd like to try that. Fantasies, all right? Come on, Dave. Okay, what, you know uh, what are you saying, Dave? Yeah. I, I said, I, what's your fantasy? My fantasy is, and I've never had it. I've had short girls, but I've never had a midget, and the reason I say that is because I, I like that. You know, when you think about a midget, what you've got going on there is someone that should be full size and they're compressed. So when they're compressed, the booty sticks out. Like, remember that that little doll you used to press? I forget what it was. You press the head and the bottom of it flares out. It's like that. So I'm very interested in being with a midget. What do you guys? What's your fantasies? Please, you don't want to hear my. You don't want to hear my um. Okay, because okay, me and my my cousin. We've talked about it, all right? We've talked about this mis midget sex thing. <laughs> Look at this. And you really, if I explain this to you, you're going to be like, I never want to see another midget in my life. Ah, so do you want to hear this or not? I'm going to hear it after we play the music. All right, let's play the piece of music. I used to have a girlfriend that was like five Edit. foot tall. She was really hot, though. Oh, but five foot's not a midget. That's, that's like a full-size midget, no. which isn't a midget. Okay, let's I play know. the music and we're going to come back. Here we go. <laughs> this is bad, Dave.
see now he's a musician and he's not an artist because if you were an artist you would think about proportional distances right and what you do is you can angle the body a certain way so it looks like that midget's actually full size. You got to think of proportion, man. You're not thinking. You're sick, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Just my <hand. laughs> So, so what? What's your fantasy, Greg? What do you got as a fantasy? You got to have some kind of fantasy, right? You're a musician. I, I don't know. I really can't answer that question. I, uh, all I can say is my fantasy is just to play music and be on stage. What a pussy. I'm pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> but now, has that always been your desire? Like you're talking about your fantasy. What Has that always been your desire? From when you were really young, were you thinking like seven years old, you're watching TV, you're watching these great bands, and you're thinking, this is me. Has that, has, has that always been in your life? It, it, it's funny that you say that, yeah, because when I was a little kid, I, I would just break out the Beatles albums and spin them and I'd see them on TV and, and that was way before my, I was too young, but I just like listened to that when I was a kid and I just loved music and I, and the Beatles was one of my favorite, especially Paul McCartney. So I just, uh, yeah, I always had this fantasy about playing music mm -hmm. and hearing it. All right. My answer to that is I was grown up and I was born in 81, set in front of the TV, I remember just that MTV icon coming up, bam, and it's just like, you know, Van Halen and all the 80s bands. I was just like, what? This is amazing, you know? David Lee Roth climbing down a mountain on a skyscraper. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. And I, I just like, it, it, hot for teacher, all that kind of stuff. I want my and MTV. Van Halen was the one. Yeah. All those amazing things. What happens to them? It's not. It's, it's supposed to stand for music television, right? right? I, I love it. I love music TV. I loved MTV. I really did love my MTV. I really did. Yeah, so did so I. I. Me too. I, I what happened? It, because that's where I was. Bro I was grown up, and and I just look what it makes you. I mean, me and my cousins had a. Um, what are those like smaller records? The the smaller ones, not oh, the forty five. Forty fives. Yes, yeah. and my grandparents had it, and I would. He, she said every time we come home, well, we wake up in the morning to go to school. We would play Billy Idol by Wendy all day. Did you actually have time between playing the Billy Idol in the middle to pull up a National Geographic magazine and masturbate before the next? Did you do that? Did you yeah. masturbate to National Geographic? <laughs> yeah, wrestler and Playboy. So. No, I did it to National yeah. Geographic. I because you, that's because what I you did. Get, you could declare innocence because you got the parents. You're a young kid. You got the parents in the house. And you yeah. can't have Playboy or Penthouse because you can't. So you pull up the National Geographic magazine with the breast in there because everyone's in Africa with big breasts and they're hanging out. And then you can, then you, your parents come in. You can, you can look like you're being educated by reading National Geographic. Right? It, it, it was a prop. Is that a National Geographic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I've been there. Yeah, we have. Yeah, but, but turn that fan on and go crazy. But you used to have, like, those, those, those uh, what are they called? Like, fashion magazines. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 girls in there. the National Geographic. You get to see no, that one. The Sears and Roebuck catalog. <laughs> 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 it was amazing. My parents thought, here's a, here's a guy who wants to learn about mechanics because you got the Sears catalog with the uh, the tools in there. I forget the names of the tools. What, what kind of tools do they sell in Sears? What was it called? I forget the name of the tools. But they thought Dave's going to grow up into being a mechanic or he's going to be in the geography or history because he's got the National Geographic and the <laughs> Sears. They had no idea that I was checking out the, the breast in both, right. the cat, in both the magazines. The breast is this? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Yeah, I got lucky. My mom used to get the Victoria's Secret magazine. So there you go. That's the one I was looking for. Yeah. Victoria's Secret. Wow. She wouldn't let me look at it. She wouldn't let me look at it. She's like, hey, what do you do with that Victoria's Secret? So I'm looking at bras, huh? Mom. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. So here's a guy right here who not only has a fantasy about midgets, but he also fantasizes about his mom. Excellent. Yeah, Whoa. exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Finally, somebody said it. Hey, there my mom go. was hot. What can I say? Oh, they set up a nationwide coverage right here on the Dave Darren show. Absolutely. Yeah. We pull, <laughs> we pull his secret out. We'll send this, by the way. We'll, I'll, send, I'll send a special version of this to your mom. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs>
Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's make sure that we uh, announce how to get your music. How do they do it? Do they go to iTunes? Do they hook up with you guys for autographed copies of your music? How do they do that? Okay. If you want a physical copy, yeah. uh, Apple CD with the artwork and stuff, go to Amazon.com and or uh, actual like a lot of people like downloads today. So whatever your preference is, if if you're just going for downloads, I would go to iTunes. Or the, those are the two main ones for, okay. uh, for buying the actual CD. Okay. How about merchandise? You guys have like T-shirts with your band name on them. You have all that stuff. So when you start playing out there, when you're starting to do this stuff in L.A. and all that stuff, do you have merch at your merch booth? I'm sure you do, right? Yeah. We have T-shirts, Shattered Empire shirts with the, with the album cover. We haven't, we haven't uh, put any of our merch out there yet. Because we're trying to push the album, but we'll be we'll be putting some merch on the Shattered Empire site on our uh, Facebook site. That's going to be great. That's that's great. We should look for that, and we should go to your website. Are you going to announce some of your uh, tour dates or your California gigs on your website? Do you have a website? Do you put it on Facebook? Are you a Twitter uh, type of band? Have right? a website. We have a band page right now. Okay. We've still been procrastinating on the website. Uh, you even have a website, right? Yeah, uh, shockingly, I do. That's right. I spend time of, when I'm not doing the National Geographic and the Sears catalog. I'm out there coding on on my website. So that's the third thing I do. Well, I need someone to help me. I need someone like you, Dave. I need someone who knows about computers and stuff because uh, I'm not that good at that stuff. Wow, there you go. Who knows? Maybe Dave Darren will spend some time with you guys doing that. But it's great having you on the show. Any words of wisdom, closing closing notes from today's show? Any anything you want to say to your fans, or what do you want to say? What would be closing words from you guys? Like Jerry Springer says, final thoughts. My final thought is make sure that. Oh wait, you know what? He knows the details about tomorrow. Oh, final thoughts is uh, buy the music, support the artists. If you like the artists, if you don't like us, don't buy it. If you like us, buy the music, support us, so we can get to your town and play for you. But if sure. you're on XM Radio, Dave, which I really think you should be on there, for there's sure. no reason you can't be. You're very intelligent, very great DJ. Uh, they're all going to mix you up with Howard Stern. <laughs> 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 they're going to think you're Howard Stern. That's yeah. it. it. That's right. See that? I, I think there's room for two of us on there, right? There's room for two Howard Sterns. Yeah. yeah, there is. Yeah, we could we could be on, and here's why: because I know yeah. Howard. Heather. Howard always talks about Robin, so Howard's on one breast, I'm on the other, and we satisfy Robin. There you go. There we are, right? Yeah. <laughs> and there would be my National Geographic fantasy as well at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> you got. You got. The both, both worlds going on there. That's, That's exactly both. right. All right, cool, guys. It was great having you on the show. This is Shattered Empire. And I'll tell you what. Can we do it? Do we have room for a fifth one? Do you want to promote a fifth one where we run it on the show? Well, you said you're going to have sex to town to town. So yeah. uh, throw town to town at you, and they can say goodbye with that. <laughs> okay. Okay.